It is just a touch after 5 p.m. on a beautiful Monday afternoon. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us. My name is CBC, so and I'm running parallel to myself live from our Channel Spec Studios to bring you yet another incredible episode of Ten Full Life. Remember, this show is proudly brought to you by Liberty, and it comes to you every weekday, Monday to Thursday from 5 p.m. until 6 p.m., so do make sure that you don't miss out. You are the rock and roll uh, star of this show, so start hitting us up with your questions on WhatsApp or send them on our app, which is and for education app, it is available on your iOS or as well as on the Google Play Store. Download this app, it will help you gain access to incredible content. It will help you also watch the show live by streaming it. And it will also give you access to awesome videos such as the analytical geometry videos because this week we are focusing on analytical geometry of grade 12. Remember, send us questions on analytical geometry if you watch videos that we have on the app you can actually also access those kinds of videos they are very nice videos that will give you content from grade 10 until grade 12 they will also help you to access something very interesting which is introduction to all the topics that you are doing at school if you want to see intro videos to the work that you're doing you can actually get them on this app remember when you send us your questions on whatsapp or by also using the app you stand a chance to win awesome prizes such as a television set a 19 inch tv by just sending us a question guys so do make sure that you send us those questions. It's then a chance to win awesome prizes and very uh, good things. If you want to see what I'm talking about, don't just take my word for it. We have a beautiful intro video on analytical geometry that I want you guys to see right now before we continue and have fun with our mathematics. So check this out. Analytical geometry, also referred to as Cartesian or coordinate geometry, Analytical geometry uses algebraic methods to represent and solve geometry problems. The correspondence between geometric shapes and algebraic equations means we can convert geometric problems into equivalent algebraic problems and solve using algebraic methods. To be successful at analytical geometry, you will need to understand all of the work done up to grade 11 and, in addition, the concepts of equations of circles, equation of a tangent to a circle, and length of a tangent to a circle. In preparation for your exams, make sure to watch all of the analytical geometry videos and attempt all of the assessment equations at the end of the lessons. Once you have mastered those skills, the career video will take you beyond the classroom. Analytical geometry is roughly 40 plus minus 3 marks in the final exam, which is approximately 27% of Maths Paper 2. See what I mean? Awesome stuff. Absolutely, absolutely incredible stuff, guys. That helps you to understand what is analytical geometry about. It helps you orientate yourself around this concept. And there's also more for all the other topics. Trig, Euclidean, you name it. Grade 10 to grade 12 content, so do make sure you download it. It's called Tenfold Education Web, and it's proudly brought to you by Liberty, just like our show is also proudly brought to you by Liberty. So do make sure that you download these videos. Now we're going to continue and have fun with our topic. Remember, this week we are continuing with analytical geometry. Remember to send us your questions on this uh, topic, analytical geometry, the whole week, guys, before we begin with revision in the following weeks. So send us your questions by just taking yourself a video and send it on WhatsApp. Alternatively, you can use our app to also send these videos. We will be more than glad to look into them and help you to make sense of these concepts. Remember, we are here to help you to multiply your knowledge tenfold and more. So do make sure that you actually keep watching the show from 5 to 6 p.m. every week and then uh, benefit from it. We are continuing with our math now. We will go to your question that was sent to us by Debra. Let's check it out. Hi, Tenfold Education. My name is Debra Kiba from Amazing Grace Private School. And I would like you guys to help me with analytical geometry question, that is. A circle has its center at A, negative 2 and 6, and has a radius of square root of 50 units. Give the circle in the form x squared plus y squared plus ax plus b a b y sorry plus c equals zero. Right. 
Nice question indeed. Very, very nice, Tebra. Thank you for that question. So what I want us to do, guys, before we continue and start analyzing this question, I want you to take a look at it and then think about it as we are busy analyzing it together. So you make sense of the story that is going on here before we even start talking in detail about this question. If you look at it, it says to us that there is a particular circle that has a center at the point A is minus 2 and 6, and it has a radius of the square root of 50. That is a given information. The first question is asking us to find the equation because this has to us give the equation of the circuit in the form x squared plus y squared plus ax plus by plus c equals to zero. Now, very powerful, not complicated at all. If you understand the defining equation of a circle, you've got the coordinates of the center and you have the radius. So this question should just be very straightforward and easy for you guys to be able to figure out. However, I always encourage you to draw a diagram because it will help you to see and visualize the story much better than just answering the question. So I'm going to come here and try to draw a circle for us so that we can actually be able to see and make sense of what this whole story is about. Now, I'm going to draw a circle here which is quite simple. Let's say this is your circle. Okay, wrong choice of color. I hope it's visible. Um, I'm actually going to try and, try and draw with a different color, guys. Let's say maybe if I use yellow to draw this. Right. Um, if I use yellow, oopsie, it's actually highlighting it a little bit more. So I think I'm going to need to remove that and be old-fashioned for now. We'll come back to uh, draw a much better circle with a different color. Right, so let's say we're going to draw a one that is a bit manual. We'll come back with a much nicer one after this. So let me use yellow and draw this circle. There's actually a simple circle that we're actually looking at here. Very nice. And it has a center at some point, which is called negative 2 and 6. So I'm going to try and introduce a Cartesian plane so that you guys can see what is going on here to make the question much more visible and vivid for us to start analyzing. There's the Cartesian plane there, and the center of the circle is positioned somewhere in the second quadrant. Why? Because if you think about it, the coordinate of A, the X value is negative 2, and the Y value is positive 6. All right, we are told that the radius of the circle, the distance from the center to the circumference of the circle, the radius is given to us as the square root of 50. And we're asked to work out the equation of this circle. It's a very straightforward question if you think about it, provided you know the equation of a circle. Now, if I try to figure this out, it's supposed to be x minus a squared plus y minus b squared equals r squared. Basic defining equation of a circle that is centered at some point a and b. The a value and the b value are the x and y coordinates of the center. So I'm going to put them there. It's going to be x minus minus 2, which will simply be plus 2 uh, squared plus y minus 6 squared equals to the radius which was given to us as the square root of 50 so I'm going to put the square root of 50 but this is r to the power of 2. So if I simplify this further to try and actually clean it up so we can see what exactly this is going to come out as you'll actually have um, x squared plus 4x right plus 4 okay plus y squared minus um, 12y plus 36 equals to the square root of 50 squared is simply going to give us the value of 50. Let's continue and simplify it further. I'm actually looking at now x squared plus 4x, right? And then we have y squared minus 12y. Now, if you check there, our 4 and our 36 will add up to 40. There's 40 equals to 50. And then if you regroup to the form that they required, we need x squared next to y squared. And then we need the x term, which is 4x. We need the y term, which is minus 12 by the 40. Minus the 50 will simply give us minus 10 equals to 0. Very basic, very simple and straightforward. You're not even thinking about it a lot. Let's move on to the second part of this question that was sent to us by Deborah. I hope this is making sense to you, Deborah. You see how easy this question is. The follow-up question is saying to us, there is actually apparently a midpoint. It says b is the midpoint of the chord pq. And then they want us to calculate the equation of the straight line through P and Q. So again, let's try to redraw this circle as ugly as it might look. We just want to make sense of the concept and not anything else. Right, there's the circle that we're looking at. Apparently, if you think about it, I'm going to try to draw a Cartesian plane here quite nicely. There's my Cartesian plane. I've drawn it in blue this time. And the center is somewhere there. That's our center with coordinate A. Negative 2 is to 6. There's apparently a chord here. If you know what a chord is, you will agree with me that this chord that will have a center of 4 and 6 is probably between this point and that point. So there's my chord. I'm going to draw a straight line, which is the chord P and Q. So this chord has a midpoint B, 
with the coordinates for is tonight. It's difficult to work with these questions if you don't have a diagram. All right, cool. Now, let's continue and see what will happen here. This is apparently the midpoint. B is the midpoint of P and Q. We are asking you to work out the equation of a straight line through P and Q. Now, for you to be able to work out the equation of a straight line, you need a gradient and a point. We do have a point P, but we don't have the gradient. We're now going to integrate Euclidean geometry to make sense of this question. Let's go and see how Euclidean geometry can help us using the very same uh, theorem that you used last time, theorem one of Euclidean geometry from grade 11. That says a line from the center perpendicular to a chord will bisect the chord. So we are using the reverse of that. Let's see how we can actually use that. If I draw a straight line from here to this, it's definitely going to be perpendicular to this. So I'm going to start by saying to you that the line AB is apparently perpendicular to the line PQ. And this is from geometry. Line from the center, right, bisects chord. Any line from the center that bisects the chord will definitely be perpendicular to the chord. Right, so now we are now going to apply the fact that perpendicular lines in analytical geometry, the gradient of AB multiplied by the gradient of PQ will give us negative one. So once I know the gradient of AB, which I have enough points for, I can then use it to work out the gradient of uh, PQ. The gradient of AB, according to uh, this, is Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Let's simplify it further and see what will come out of this. It's actually going to be nine minus six all over four minus minus two, which is as good as plus two. If you simplify it, it's gonna be three all over six, which is simply a half. All right, therefore, a half multiplied by the gradient of PQ must give us negative one since those two lines are perpendicular to each other. Let's see what will happen. Therefore, this basically means the gradient of PQ will just simply be negative two. Now I've got the gradient as negative two. I've got the coordinate of B, which was simply four and nine. It's actually four and nine. So let's see what will happen. Y is MX plus C, very easy. Your gradient is negative two. Your X value is four and your y value is actually equal to nine, then this simply uh, is going to simplify to, that's negative eight actually, and if you transpose it, you'll get 17 is c, therefore the equation of that line, pq, is basically y equals to minus two x plus 17. Very nice and easy to work with. Quite an awesome question indeed that requires you to integrate your Euclidean geometry. Never ever forget the trigonometry and Euclid works a lot when you're doing analytical geometry of cycles. Let's move to the next part of this question, which is probably the last part of the question. It says to us that we need to calculate the coordinates of point P and point Q that, um, such that P is nearer to the y-axis. So it turns out that I drew this diagram correctly, even though I was not even aware of what is going on. So we've got a point P here, which has an unknown coordinate. We've got the point Q here, which is another one, right? Which we don't know the coordinates of. We want you to work out the coordinates of P and Q if P is closer to the y-axis. Now, what we need here to work out these two coordinates, we just need to know what is the equation of the line PQ and what is the equation of the circle? So I'm gonna use the equation of the circle that we found earlier as um, it was x minus of a minus, which was plus two. Remember the center of the circle was negative two is to six. And we were also told that the radius of this circle was square root of 50. So x plus two squared plus y minus six squared is r squared, which is just simply 50. That is gonna be my equation one. And I'm gonna take the equation of a straight line, which we just found, negative two x, plus 17, and this is gonna be my equation two. I'm just gonna stop it wherever I see y and try to find the value of x, and then replace back to y to work out the corresponding y values. So this is basically x plus two squared plus minus two x plus 17 minus six squared is equal to 50. Simplify this further, you actually have x plus two squared plus negative two x plus this is actually 11 squared is equal to 50. Whenever you ask to work out the coordinate of the point of intersection, guys, the first thing that must come to your mind is simultaneous. You need two equations and work them simultaneously to figure out what are the coordinates of the point of interception. So binomial squared, x squared plus four x plus four. Negative two squared is positive four x squared. Two times 11 is 22. We are looking at minus 44 x here plus one, two, one is actually equal to 50. Let's group them. Fifth x squared and four x squared will give us five of those guys. Uh, and then four x minus 44 is actually minus 40 x. Four um, plus one, two, one is one, two, five. If you minus 50, 
we're actually sitting with positive 75 equals to zero. Let's simplify this by dividing everything by five. You're actually going to get x squared minus, I think it's eight, this one. 75 over five is simply giving us 15, beautiful stuff. Apply factorization here, basic grade nine, grade tens work. You have three here and you have five. Both of them are negative. Let's fix that, sorry for that. Yes, both of them are basically negative and simple. <clears throat> All right, excuse me for that. So now, if you look at this, our x value is going to come out as 3, or our x value is just simply going to come out as 5. Now, we were told that p is closer to the y-axis than uh, q, so which means p will have a, an x value that is smaller. So 3 is here and 5 is there. We're still missing the corresponding y values. When we know x is 3 and y is, I mean, x is 5, we need the corresponding y values. We're simply going to substitute here in the line. So that means that for uh, p, right, y of p will be negative 2 into 3, right, plus 17. That is 17 minus 6, which gives me 11. So the corresponding y value there is going to be 11. If I use um, the same story to work out the y value of q, it is going to be negative 2 into 5 plus 17, which is basically 17 minus 10, and it is actually giving us a value of 7. So I'm going to put 7 as the corresponding y value there. So those are simply the corresponding x and y coordinates of the point P and Q according to the story that was given to us. Every time you work, you're working out the coordinates of the point of intersection, guys, it's the same story. It doesn't matter which graphs you're working with. You always, always have to make sure that you find two equations and then you solve them simultaneously. I hope this has helped you to understand how to analyze this question. We're still coming back with a lot of content, guys. There is the wild card on its way. Someone is going to be awarded the television. There's a lot of very great stuff that is coming your way. The show is jam-packed. Make sure you don't miss anything. You stay with us. We'll be back after this. Uh, we'll be right back after this.